Hey everyone, today we'll be learning how to play the 1998 Paul Peterson game known as Guillotine. This game is intended for 2-5 to five players and has an average playtime of approximately 30 minutes as you can see. So I'll actually start by going ahead and opening up all the contents in here as well as showing you proper setup for this game. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look here. So upon opening the box right away you will see a couple things. You'll actually see this really long guillotine as well as two separate stacks of cards. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is separate these cards into two different decks. So you can easily see these by the background. As you can see there's one of more like a yellowish brownish kind of background like this which has guillotine on both sides and then there's one that has a white background with only one guillotine on it. These are the two different kinds. Let me go ahead and keep opening these up. As you can see, sometimes they will get a little bit uh, a little bit mixed up here and there because the box doesn't actually separate cards like most other board games. It's just a box and you put cards in there, try to organize them, and when you take them out, they could get a little bit mixed up here and there. But that's perfectly fine. Okay, so here are the two different piles. So I have these right here. And then this thing that I didn't mention is actually the rule book. Normally you of course want to read through it, but obviously we're not going to be looking at that for the sake of this video. Now this guillotine thing is actually completely optional, but it does help to go ahead and play with it so people actually know and keep track of who exactly is in the front of the line and who's in the back of the line. It's pretty simple, you just simply pop this like this. Let me go ahead and put it a little closer. Put it in there and then it should get stuck like that because it's supposed to be standing. That's the whole goal of this. You put it somewhere on one side and you go ahead and stand it. These two decks need to actually be shuffled, so I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle them really well. Once they're shuffled, what you actually wanna do is place the guillotine on the right hand side, because we're about to be making a row, actually, of a bunch of cards. I'm also gonna go ahead and zoom out the camera just a little bit so you have more space and can see what is actually gonna happen here. So the yellow background cards, which would be these right here, are actually the nobles. What you're gonna do once you shuffle them is actually get 12 of these face up and go ahead and lay them out in a row. Obviously, I'm not going to do this as organized as possible because, you know, I'm a little bit limited in space for the sake of the video. Okay, there they are. It's a little tighter at the end, but just bear with me. Once again, I'm in limited space here. Then you're going to place the rest of these face up just anywhere within easy reach of all the players. And then these white background cards, you're going to shuffle them like what I already did that. And then what you're going to do is deal five cards to each player. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be demonstrating it with a two-player game, just so you know exactly how this works. So simply deal them by giving out five cards to each. And once that's done, you can go ahead and set these pretty much right over here as well, you know, just within easy reach of all players. So here's five cards for this hand, and there's five cards for this hand. And that right there is the setup. Moving on to the actual gameplay as well as purpose of this game in order to win, you'll actually see that all the nobles have a number in the bottom right hand corner of their card. This indicates the value of that card. Some have positive and some actually have negative. Like for example, we have the martyr here that gives you a minus one. So you have to be careful and know which cards actually have minus and which ones give plus. Each player's turn is composed of three different steps. The very first thing is that a player may play one action card from their hand. So they're simply going to be looking at the cards in their hand, looking at all the different cards that can do different effects, and simply play one by just revealing it face up, reading it out loud so other players know exactly what that did, and then go ahead and proceed to that action. Let me demonstrate this part one. So if you're looking at this hand for the first player, one really good one here is going to be this stumble card. It says move a noble forward exactly one place in line, which means that you get to select any one noble and move that one noble exactly one place forward in line. However, before I play the card, I have to mention part two. Part two of your turn is you will be taking the noble at the front of the line, which is right where the guillotine actually is, and you will be putting it into your score pile. Your score pile is just this little area right here, it's invisible, but all cards, meaning all nobles that are placed in the score pile, as well as a couple of action cards must always be played face up. Cards in the hand are hidden, but cards in the area are actually face up. So knowing that logic, if I take a look at the one here in the front, this cardinal is actually a five, which is a really high valued card. So if I were to move another one, let's say this one to the front, that wouldn't be a good move because the martyr, as you can see, is a minus one. I would be switching them like this, and then I would take the minus one. It doesn't make any sense. So instead what I'm gonna do is take a look at this one here. Do you see how this one is a minus three? Well, 
if I was smart, I could actually play this card, this action card known as Stumble. I'm going to play it and move one, one noble forward exactly one place in line. So I declare this one, Hero of the People, to move forward one space. Then I proceed to step two of my turn, which means I'll take the noble at the front of the line, which is the cardinal, place it in front of my play area, and then the third part of your turn is to then draw one action card from the top of the deck over here, and you add it into your hand. Now, for part one, when you actually want to play a card, that part is optional. You don't have to play a card if you don't want to, but you cannot play more than one. So it's either zero cards or one card, but you can't play more than one unless a card specifically says you can play another one, which there are some. Part two, however, is mandatory. You cannot just say, I don't want to take the noble in the front. You can't do that. You must take it in the front. And part three is also mandatory. You must draw a card and add it into your hand, which means if you don't play a card, you are still drawing a card because you would actually have one additional card for your next turn if you would like to do that. Oh, and by the way, any cards that are played, you can just simply make a little discard pile. I like to put it just right there next by, next to the deck, just so all players know, hey, that's the discard pile away from all this other action of cards that are going to be played over here. So that's the first turn, and I actually ended up drawing another, I believe it was another Stumble, funny enough. I think that's the one that I drew, but I may have mixed up my cards. But that's the first turn. I have five points. Now player two proceeds, and they get to look at their cards, and essentially going to go ahead and play a card if they would like to, then take the card in the front, meaning a noble in the front, place it there, and then draw a card. And play proceeds like that. Now, when does the game actually end? The game ends in three full rounds of 12 nobles each. As you can see, there's 12 nobles. Once all 12 nobles are gone from this row, day one is over. When day one is over, all cards in the hand from each player stay in the hand, and all cards in front of themselves, meaning the nobles, stay in the zones as well. You don't touch that. All you're gonna do, because this row is gonna be empty, of course, and all these are gonna be, you know, spread out. Like, let's say this happens, and then that happens, you know, like, there, day's over, all these nobles were claimed on each side. So all you're gonna be doing is then taking another 12 nobles from the very top, very first one on the right side, and then you're gonna go ahead and repeat that same exact process. And that right there is day two set up, and then play proceeds by continuing from the person who finished off. So let's say this player over here ended up taking the last noble, it would then go to the next player. So this player over here would then go ahead and take their turn first by doing the same plays as before. Essentially the same three steps. To be honest, it's quite a simple game. All you have to do is know that the step one of your turn is optional, step two is mandatory, and step three is also mandatory. Once all three days are done, each player is going to go ahead and add up by tallying up all the different noble points that they actually have. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Now the rulebook doesn't make any mention of what happens in a tie. Most board games and card games actually do emphasize that, but this one doesn't, which means that if there's a tie, I guess it's literally just a tie. There's no tiebreaker. And that is essentially how you play the game Guillotine. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you, and if it has, I strongly encourage you to go and leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you did enjoy the video and found it helpful. I do post multiple gaming videos on a daily basis, so hopefully you enjoy my channel. Bye bye everyone, have a great, and of course, a very fantastic day.